Okay, family, Shabbat Shalom, and welcome to another edition of the GLCC Sabbath. Um, as you can see, myself and Elder Iraq are filling in for Elder Karshar. Uh, hopefully, we'll be back to be the Lord's will next Sabbath, but for today, we will be filling in. Uh, before we get started with anything, I first want to make sure that you all can hear and see nice and clearly. And when that's established, we'll get right into it with a few announcements that we'll make before and after we start. Um, in the midst of that, obviously, we're going to be going into a, uh, a, a detailed lesson that hopefully we'll be able to finish within the next hour, hour and a half. But before we get into anything, let's first make sure you all are with us. Okay, great. All right. Okay, so when it says the volume is low, let me try to adjust that very quickly. Okay. Let's try to make an adjustment on the sound so that we don't have to in the midst of it. And uh, I'll just confirm with you all if this is much better. Okay, it may be low. I'm not, I'm not up on the microphone. I'm a little bit away from the mic so uh, I'm gonna make some adjustments and you all just confirm someone says loud and clear okay better now okay great great okay so without further ado let's get right into it again we're here for another edition of the GOCC Sabbath lesson and we do have I believe a very important lesson prepared for today so let's get into it we're first going to start off with the Shema, which is here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. And then afterwards, we'll make a quick announcement concerning the Hebrew and Bible Academy. And then after that, we'll get into the lesson. Shema Yasha'ala Ahaya Alahayanawa Ahaya Akkad. Shema Yasha'ala Ahaya Alahayanawa Ahaya Akkad. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Hero Israel, the Lord our God is one. Come on. All right. So, as I mentioned, uh, for those who are interested uh, in the upcoming academy, we're now accepting enrollments. And I say for the upcoming academy, because in this academy, we have about two weeks left. Uh, tomorrow, if it be the Lord's will. We'll be covering an updated version of a lesson that we've had for years in the academy. That lesson being the four beasts of Daniel. Now, just to kind of give you all some insight before the next academy comes, um, we're going to try to build upon that lesson even more and provide more updates on that particular lesson. But that lesson is, uh, is updated and will be taught in tomorrow's lesson. Um, also, we have uh, other lessons dealing with the Ark of the Covenant, which are fairly new to the Academy. We've only had that uh, for the past two Academies, so that's still new, and that's something we still want to build upon. Um, we also dealt with a lesson for the first time a few weeks ago titled Portals, which is a very profound lesson. And again, with every lesson that we have in the Academy, we seek to try to improve upon it as time goes by. But... These are some of the lessons that we have been covering in the past Academy. Uh, also, the truth about the fall between Adam and Eve, uh, giving insight on uh, some of the uh, spirits that have entered in and have uh, sought since the beginning of time to destroy the family structure and how those spirits attack the man, how those same spirits attack the woman and overall attack the family. So that's one of the lessons that we cover in the academy, uh, creation of the universe, 
uh, giving you a detailed blow by blow breakdown of how the earth was created, how the heavens were created, um, how various things such as angelic bodies were created, the so-called solar system, how it was created, vegetation and various things that we take for granted in this earth, mostly because we taught that those things sprang from nothing. Well, in the Bible Academy, we give you detailed insight on how those things were created and who created those things. So we have a plethora of lessons that we've taught and will continue to teach new, uh, whether they're new lessons, brand new, never been taught, or, or lessons that we've touched on in the past that we update and, and add more detailed information to ensure that uh, even those who have been in the Academy for multiple times, are getting something new with each enrollment. Speaking on that, for those who have been in uh, other academies and have been in this present academy, you have noticed that we have added a lot of information and have changed uh, some of how we teach even the Hebrew. Okay, A lot of that has been uh, somewhat reshifted to make it much easier for those who are learning so that they have a better experience when learning the biblical Hebrew. Not to mention also, we, we know that we have the news segment with Elder Rikarshiar and Elder Shapat, which uh, keeps us updated on world events, what's taking place throughout the four corners of the earth, how it affects us, and its relation to the Bible. Okay? So, if you're interested in the upcoming academy, please go to historytimes.org. Again, that's historytimes.org, and that'll give you all the information you need to know on how to enroll in the Hebrew and Bible Academy. Now, without further ado, let's get right into our lesson, which we have prepared for this Sabbath. Again, we only seek to be here for about an hour, an hour and a half. And uh, hopefully within that time, we're able to relay this information through the Spirit of the Most High. And uh, this be a help to you and your family and your loved ones and those in your community who you're communicating with and uh, are sharing this information with uh, hopefully it will be of a great help. But just to get to the title of the lesson, the title is The Funding of Black Death. The Funding of Black Death. Okay. Now, there's many ways uh, or there's various ways I wanted to title this lesson. But uh, for the sake of not trying to raise any either red flags or one thing I don't want is that I cover for a, a lesson and then we come back or Elder comes back to do the radio show and the page is gone. Okay. <laughs> so uh, what I try to do, I try to tame some of the titles, uh, not wanting any of uh, any red flags again to be raised up. But nonetheless, the information that will be taught, regardless of the title, hopefully will convey uh, some of the ideas that I uh, first considered when it came to the title. And uh, hopefully you all will kind of get the gist and, and, and get a detailed understanding of what it is we're trying to convey about how um, billionaires, uh, either billionaire individuals uh, or corporations, are funding black death. Now, when we think of black death, obviously, there's many ways that we as so-called African-Americans and even uh, so-called Latinos, Hispanics and Native Indians there's many ways that we're dying in this society, but there's one in particular that we're going to focus on in this lesson, and uh, you'll see as we get into it which, uh, which, or, or what will be the focus of today's lesson, or what form of black death we're going to focus on. Okay. Now. There's a few things we're going to show you before we actually get into the scriptures, but um, to set this all up, we're going to get started. We're going to show you a few things, a few websites, um, a few video clips, and obviously I want to make this disclaimer that anything that we show, whether it be media, whether it be a website, whether it be audio, video, or what have you, um, everything that we will show is specifically for educational purposes only. Again, I repeat, any form of media that we will be showing is specifically for educational purposes only. Okay, now, let's get into it. All right, so, what form of black death are we focusing on? 
we're focusing primarily on abortion. Okay? Now, when we speak of abortion, there's many angles we can take. But before we take on any angle, we first want to highlight an organization that many of you may be familiar with through personal experience or simply through research. You've heard of an organization that has become infamous for its associations with the practice of abortion and more specifically, abortion as it relates to the black and uh, the so-called black and so-called Latino community. Okay. And that organization is Planned Parenthood. Okay. So for those of you who do know, and as well as for those who don't know, who may happen upon this for the first time, you may be asking yourself the question, what is Planned Parenthood? Okay. So we're going to hopefully help provide that information and give you some insight on what this has to do with black death or what they have to do with black death. So what is Planned Parenthood? We're going to simply go to a Wikipedia website and they're going to give us the insight on what Planned Parenthood is. We're going to stick mainly within this first paragraph. We're going to do a lot of jumping around, but nonetheless, there's a means to the end of what we're bringing out. So let's start off with what is Planned Parenthood? Elder Yurok, if you can read that. What is Planned Parenthood? You can start there where it says Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood Federation of America Incorporated, or Planned Parenthood, is a nonprofit organization that provides reproductive health care in the United States and globally. So they provide what is called, this is a nonprofit organization which provides what they call reproductive health care. Now you're going to find out that the term reproductive health care is a code word. And you're going to find out what that code word is. But for the sake of just getting some insight on what Planned Parenthood is, let's just stick here. It says that Planned Parenthood or the Planned Parenthood Federation of America Incorporated is a nonprofit organization that provides, quote unquote, reproductive health care in the United States and globally. Read on. It is a tax exempt corporation under Internal Revenue Code Section 501c3. So this is a 501c3 tax organization. OK. Uh, or tax-exempt corporation, which means they can receive uh, non-taxable donations or what have you. And those who donate to this particular organization can receive write-offs. Read on. And a member association of the International Planned Parenthood Federation. Okay. Planned Parenthood uh, Federation of America has its roots in Brooklyn, New York where Margaret Sanger opened the first birth control clinic in the U.S. Okay, so the origins of this federation or this organization are in Brooklyn, New York, where Margaret Sanger, now I want you to keep that in your minds, that name. Many of you are familiar with this name. Many of you are not familiar with this name. But I want you to keep this name in your mind because we're going to get some insight into the mind of Margaret Sanger. And what her inspiration was as it pertained to what they call reproductive health care. We're going to find out through her words what that actually mean. Okay. But reading on, it says here, uh, it was started or has its roots in Brooklyn, New York, where Margaret Sanger opened the first birth control clinic. Read on. In the U.S. in 1916. Sanger founded the American Birth Control League in 1921, which changed its name to Planned Parenthood in 1942. So initially, it was called the American Birth Control League. So when we're talking about reproductive health care, or what they call, what they label reproductive health care, they're speaking primarily of birth control. Okay? Birth control being another term or I guess you would say a segment or an arm of population control as you're going to find out. So it was initially called 
the American Birth Control League in 1921, and in 1942, the name was changed to Planned Parenthood. Now, there's more information you can read up on on Planned Parenthood, uh, the origin of their organization, and uh, the history of their organization, and um, uh, leading up to today, but we're going to leave it there, and we're going to jump over, for the sake of time, into the mind of Margaret Sanger. I told you to keep that name in your mind so that we can get into her mind and get an understanding of what it is she believed and what her desires were in establishing the American Birth Control League, which was later referred to as Planned Parenthood. Many of you see this picture. Many of you have seen her before. You've heard of her before. But one thing I want to mention about Margaret Sanger and Planned Parenthood and her organization and her ideology is that she was not the only one. She is often the poster child for quote unquote eugenics. She is the poster child of quote unquote Planned Parenthood, but she was not the only one, meaning she was not a soloist. Okay? This was not an independent one man army. Okay? There were many organizations. There were many individuals, very influential, uh, what the society considers to be educated, well-renowned people who were involved in eugenics. And the work she did was just one, just one segment of that, but there were many segments of eugenics. Okay? So, getting into the mind of Margaret Sanger, it says here, Margaret Sanger, founder of mega abortion provider Planned Parenthood. This is from the TFP Student Action. I know many people say that this is biased because it's coming from an organization that stands for, as they say here, Tradition, Family, and Property. I don't know much about this organization, so I can't speak for them necessarily, but uh, what we can say is that they do have some information here about Margaret Sanger that you can find in many places. Okay, this is not exclusive to this website. Okay, so this is 21 quotes by Margaret Sanger that will probably make you sick. So the question is, what are these quotes? Before we get into these quotes of the Iraq, you can read the entry. Okay, these quotes by Margaret Sanger, founder of Planned Parenthood, reveal the wicked roots of the abortion movement and expose the twisted mindset behind the present day culture of death. In her own words, Sanger peddles racism, eugenics, contraception, abortion, while demonstrating a visceral hatred for children, parenthood, marriage, and the Catholic Church. Right, so we're going to read this. It says here, Sanger peddles racism, eugenics, contraception, abortion, while demonstrating a visceral, meaning a strong hatred for children, parenthood, marriage, and the Catholic Church. Now, many of you will look at that and say, well, the Catholic Church, I mean, the Catholic Church, who are they? For someone to be angry with or to have some type of vitriol against. Um, they're off as well. They're evil as well. Okay. But what you have to understand is that in this society, organizations such as the Catholic Church, they kind of stand as a symbol. Okay. For the Christian faith. Not that they necessarily believe in the truth of the Bible or what have you. But in this society, when someone comes out and says that they're anti-Catholic Church or what have you. Um, it's more so them being against a symbol, okay? Almost a an image of what the, the, the Bible really stands for, even though they don't stand for the Bible, but to this world, they are an image of what the Bible stands for, okay? So these were the things that she stood for and stood against. Reading on. If you want to open more eyes to the truth, please share these quotes far and wide. Only when the abortion agenda is fully rejected in our culture will America be ready to turn back to God. Okay, so let's get some of her quotes. Okay, these are quotes. Okay, that are attributed to Margaret Sanger. Let me make sure you all can see this. All right, let me adjust that. Okay. All right, I'm sorry. Just want to make sure you all can see this. Let me scroll down and adjust. All 
All right. You can start, Elder Yurok. Quote number one, but for my view, I believe that there should be no more babies. Right. So this is attributed to an interview with John Parsons in 1947, where she is cited as saying, or quoted as saying, but for my view, meaning for Margaret Sanger's view, she believes that there should be no more babies. Okay. This is coming from the mouth of the woman who is and who was the mind behind what is called today Planned Parenthood. Okay. Quote number two. The most merciful thing that the large family does to one of its infant members is to kill it. Is to kill it. Now, when she says she believes there should be no more babies, that seems a little vague. Like, it seems like she's just saying she don't want babies in general. But you're going to find out that there's a specific class, a specific, a, a specific ethnic class of children that she believes should not be brought into the earth. There's a certain ethnic class of people that she believes should not have the right to reprocreate. I mean, you're going to find out what that ethnic class is. So when we read this, sometimes it seems like she's talking about the, the, the greater... Uh, I guess you would say the greater population of all children, of all races, of all people. Well, no, that's not what eugenics was necessarily about. Okay, it was, it was about rooting out specific uh, uh, ethnic groups uh, to say that they are not fit to have children. Okay, that they do not produce good genes. Uh, they produce children that uh, are prone to crime. They produce children that are prone to disease and sickness. And because of this... It has a profound negative effect on the greater society. Okay. So there are people who she does believe should be able to have more baby babies. And then there's others who she believes should not be able to have more babies. So now going back here to what Elder Yorok just read, it says the most merciful thing that the large family can do to one of its infant members is to kill it. Now, what does she mean by the large family? Is she talking about all types of families, all races of families? Well, you're going to find out what she means by the large family. Okay. Number three. We don't want the word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. What population? The Negro population. So there is a specific population that she believed should not be able to reprocreate. And that is specifically the Negro population. Okay. The Negro population. This is attributed to a quote from the letter to Dr. Clarence J. Gamble, December 10th, 1939. Okay. So when you hear her say that she believes that no baby should be born, what babies is she speaking about? The babies of the Negro population. When she says that the most merciful thing that the large family can do to one of its infant members is to kill it. Which type of family is she, talk, she talking about? She's talking about a member or she's talking about a family of the Negro population. Okay, this was her focus. Okay, we'll just read a few more. We can't read all 21. We'll read a few more and move on to the next point. Number four. Number four, I accepted an invitation to talk to the women's branch of the Ku Klux Klan. I was escorted to the platform, was introduced, and began to speak. In the end, through simple illustrations, I believe I had accomplished my purpose. A dozen invitations to speak to similar groups were offered. Were offered. Okay, so this is attributed to Margaret Sanger in Autobiography, published in 1938, page 366. So, yes, she was associated with or she at least sat down with the women's branch of the Ku Klux Klan. She expressed her beliefs as it pertained to being a, a birth control and targeting certain aspects of American society, more prime, more specifically uh, the black family. The problems or the quote unquote problems they pose to the greater society by introducing these uh, these criminal these criminals into society, these in, the diseased infested people into society, these mentally unstable people into society. 
Okay, these are all the these are all the things they would peddle as a means of uh, getting people on board, getting various organizations on board uh, to invest in and to be supportive of the idea of eugenics and and uh, 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 birth control. Okay, let's read one more and we'll move on. I think the greatest sin in the world is bringing children into the world that have disease from their parents. That have no chance in the world to be a human being practically delinquents, prisoners, all sorts of things just mark when they are born. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> that to me is the greatest sin that people can, can commit. Right. So this is attributed to an interview with journalist Mike Wallace, 1957. I believe you can go on YouTube and actually watch this. This interview is documented um, and archived on YouTube. So you can go and watch that when you get the chance. Margaret Sanger interview with Mike Wallace. Okay. Now, many of you may read this quote and brush over it, believing that, um, you know, I, I think this is in response to a question. It's been a while since I watched this interview. I, I believe this is in response to a question concerning, um, do you believe that it's a sin to, to murder or kill children? Something like that Mike Wallace asked her. And she responded by the greatest sin is bringing children in the world uh, who are delinquents and are prisoners from birth. And what you have to realize is that within eugenics, they believe, okay, through what we would consider today pseudoscience, but this is what they were using. And you may find this uh, popping up and rearing its, rearing its ugly head in other forms of science when they say that someone has inherited behaviors, okay? Meaning that because your father was a criminal, uh, you from birth are destined to be a criminal. Um, your father was uh, maybe a murderer or what, whatever the case may be, which means that from birth, you are predestined to be a murderer, which means now, um, in order to eliminate murders from our society, something must happen with your father or and with your mother before you have an opportunity to come into the earth because murderers beget murderers. Now, can that be true to some degree? Possibly. Okay. Is that always the case? Absolutely not. There's many traits that your parents carry, some of which are that you may pick up OK, not inherently just because you're born and you have their bloodline that automatically you're going to be uh, or, or take on the attributes or, or inherit some of the bad behaviors of your parents. It's more so through habit. It's more so through what you see when you're growing up. It's more so through picking these things up uh, through experience. OK, but the whole idea that because your your father may have committed a crime or whatever the case may be, that automatically you're going to commit crime and you're destined to commit crime from birth, that all goes back to eugenics. Which means that, listen, if your father committed crimes, then we have to cut your father off from the ability of producing more children. Okay? Which means we either have to do something to prevent your mother, your mother's ability of reproducing, or we have to do something to your father physically, surgically, or what have you to prevent him from being able to produce more children. So now you understand, and I didn't necessarily plan to touch on this point, and I'm not going to touch on, I'm just going to make this point. Now you see why there's a certain image projected of so-called blacks and Latinos on the television, on the radio, in the movie theaters, okay? And these so-called scholarly books and these works that may come out and may uh, present these negative images of our people. Okay. Um, making you believe that the only destination for a black man is dead or in jail. Where do you think these ideas come from? Is this naturally what we were born to become? Were we born to, for this to be our destination? Or is this information just repetitious, repetitiously put before us and we somewhat become living prophecy. Okay. Um, the only uh, a, a career for a, a black man is to, to be a drug dealer, a, a pimp, a pusher, a murderer. 
a mugger. Okay, black women are only destined to be uh, prostitutes and strippers and just lowlifes. Okay, is this what we have been destined to become or have these images have been replicated so much and pushed on us so much that we began to kind of buy into the imagery? Okay, now I mention that because, because this is what's projected to us on a daily basis, it gives an image to the world to say that something must happen to stop the ability for these people to reproduce. Okay? Because listen, I watch Boys in the Hood. And according to Boys in the Hood, all they want to do, they want to drink 40s, even though that's back in the day. Okay? They want to drink 40s. They want to do drive-bys. They want to shoot each other. Okay? They want to get revenge. Okay, they full of that hot Negro blood. They just want to commit all levels of crime and 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 uh, uh, self destruction. Okay, you all seen Minister Society. Okay, and I'm speaking from the standpoint of the not just us. We can watch this stuff and we can differentiate because we're living in some of these experiences and we know that that's just a small segment of the so-called black community. Okay, everyone is not a criminal. Everyone is not a murderer. Everyone is not a hustler and a pusher. Okay? The large portion of black society are just hardworking people who want to live just like everyone one, one else wants to live. Wants to provide for their family and the opportunity to provide for their family just like everyone else. But when the greater society, they see these images and they see the rap videos. Okay? And they see all these various things in their mind. On one level, hey, it's entertaining, but at the same time, would I want this in my community? Would I want this to overrun and reproduce where I live? Absolutely not. Okay? So it is society's responsibility to make sure that these people cannot reproduce and do not reproduce because look at them. When they reproduce, look at what they produce. Criminals, murderers, drug dealers, prostitutes, strippers, lowlifes, uneducated, diseased okay can't provide for themselves can't fend for themselves okay prison inmates okay this is the image and all of that feeds into quote unquote eugenics okay so getting back on it let's go on to the next point Right, make sure you all are still with us. All right, moving on to the next thing. So, now we know the mind behind the woman, Margaret Sanger, who started Planned Parenthood, which was initially called, if we go back here, the American Birth Control League. Okay, that's the original name, but it was changed to Planned Parenthood. This was her mindset. Okay, let's go back and read that again. Okay, number three. Number three, we don't want the word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. So this was the end game. Now let's fast forward to 20, so-called 2022, and let's see who they have as poster children, mascots. For Planned Parenthood. What do you know? We're going to play this video very quickly. This is simply for educational purposes. Let me know if you all can hear it. I would not be able to hear it on my end. So uh, just let me know if you can hear it. There we go. Educational purposes. Fair use. Our futures are abortions. The Supreme Court have left, left us in the dark. Planned Parenthood is going cross country to shine a light on our rights. Bands off our bodies. Hmm. Let's play it again. Fair use. Well, I went down to the Supreme Court and I took back what they stole from me. Took it 
the Supreme Court has left us in the dark. Planned Parenthood is going cross-country to shine a light on our rights. Ban off our bodies. You all see the Jedi mind trick. Okay? Hopefully you all see the Jedi mind trick. To make you believe that you having the right to, as they say, abort your children is somehow a woman's right or somehow is empowerment of the woman. Okay? And they're stating that we want these bans, meaning that there's certain places that ban abortion. They want the bans to be off of their bodies. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, you guys said you couldn't you couldn't hear the video. Okay, I mean you saw the visual. I'm pretty sure you all can kind of plug in what they're saying. This is the same old rhetoric over and over. You'll you'll probably see, you know, you you've seen this rhetoric a thousand times. Just the images themselves. The images themselves kind of give rise to um <clears throat> Okay, did not see the video. We'll probably play it once more. Let's 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 do it once more again. But again, you all you all have heard this before. This is this is uh the same old rhetoric over and over when it comes to quote unquote women's health, women's rights. So it's it's it's, it's nothing new. You can probably plug in the words verbatim without even listening to the video or hearing the video, but we'll play it again. Fair use. So it says, let's go back. So this is what they have as uh, the mascot and the poster child of Planned Parenthood. Okay, I don't know this sister personally. I don't know what her views are, but if I'm going to use discernment, okay, if I'm going to use discernment, in fact, let me not go there. But I'm pretty sure we all can yeah, discern the, the spirit that's going <laughs> on with this uh with this sister, she she looks like the prototype for a particular spirit. But we're not gonna go there for to, for today's lesson. What I want to get is the message, okay? Our bodies, our futures, our abortions, brothers and sisters. You, again, hopefully you all see the Jedi mind trick, okay? Hopefully you see the Jedi mind trick. Now, according to the Bible, your children are your future. According to the Bible, your children. Continue on your name. Obviously, none of us are immortal. None of us can live forever. No matter how much we may pursue our own personal goals, our own personal achievements in life, as many of these sisters are sold, it's about you. It's about your career. It's about your life. Yes, you may buy into that, but as you get older, you realize that you're immortal. You can't live on forever. So you're going to need all that you have worked for. You're going to need someone to hand that down to. Now, if you bought into the philosophy and the ideology of what's being presented in this video and all over this website, the question is, when you get up in age and you can no longer produce, do not have the ability to reproduce, who do you hand down all that you have worked for to? Okay. Okay. So your children are your future, but yet they're selling this dream. They're selling this idea that many young women like the one presented in the video will fall for. Okay. will fall for. And it won't be until it's too late that she's been, that she'll figure out she's been played. She's been lied to. She's been sold a dream. Okay. Moving on. Okay, I, I don't know how to turn this up. It's just, one second. Okay, so uh, you know, you guys, when you get the opportunity, you can go through Planned Parenthood. There's a lot of rhetoric, a lot of propaganda on here. And again, look at the poster children. This looks like a so-called. She could pass for maybe a, a black woman, maybe a so-called Latino woman. Okay. 
But nonetheless, these are poster children. Okay, here's one I want to highlight specifically. Look at this here. Look at this. This is the rhetoric. What is that? Right. What does this have to do with women's rights? What does this have to do? I'm speaking about this in particular. I love my transgender child. What does this have to do with women's reproductive health? It has nothing to do with reproductive health, but it has everything to do with what? Eugenics. Okay. If you can convince your child that they are not what they were born, they will not play the roles that they were given from God Almighty. What are the roles? Let's get the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse number 26. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Here's the role. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So the Most High made man in his image to rule, first and foremost. Okay? It wasn't given to transgender to rule. It wasn't given to a man who thinks he's something else to rule. It wasn't given to a woman who thinks she's something else to rule. That's first and foremost. Read on. So God created man in his own image. Mm -hmm. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Male and female created he them. So that kills the conversation of how many genders are there. How many sexes are there. According to the Bible, there are only two. I hate to burst your bubble. I know we're in a so-called progressive liberal society where you have to accept everything that someone says and everything that's in somebody's mind. Everything that someone says is a part of their, whatever they're feeling, their emotions, you, you have to accept it, regardless of how ridiculous it sounds. But according to the Bible, the sound word of God that has stood the test of time since the beginning of time, According to this word, there are two genders, male and female. Okay? Now, what was it given to male and female to do? Go ahead. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. Reproduce. It was given for male and female to come together and reproduce. So, again, if you have a male who think he's something else, or a female who thinks she's something else outside of a female. And this is something they've been indoctrinated with from childhood. They themselves will elect themselves and select themselves to fulfill the goal of eugenics. Okay? Because a woman who believes that she's not a woman doesn't have any interest in reproducing, of laying down with the proper gender in order to reproduce. And the same thing vice versa for a man who thinks he's something else. So you are fulfilling the goal of population control, birth control, eugenics. Okay? And it's, it's a shame. It's not until a lot of these uh, children, speaking on, on this for, for, uh, for a second, it's not until they get older till they realize that they've been played. They've been indoctrinated. They have been fooled. This is gonna okay? Be the As you get older, mortality starts to set in. You start to really reflect and think about what you did like with me. your life more comfortable to seeing it. and how you when lived your life. Table, spreads your legs. It's okay? When you're younger, this is adult you feel like you'll live, you, you can live on but forever. But as, do, as age sets children. in, you start to really consider some things. And the last I checked, I don't see too many people who are up in age who identify as with the sign says. Shake 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 <laughs> There's not too many old people that I've seen that identify as we see on this sign. The word you see there. The TG word. Okay. But moving on. Let's see. The poster children. Okay. The po <laughs> The poster children for Planned Parenthood. Now remember. The woman who started Planned Parenthood says we don't want the word to get out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. 
And here it is. A few women from the Negro population are here as poster children, as mascots for Planned Parenthood. Okay. Why? Well, just like the sister we saw earlier in the video, let's just say many of these uh, sisters you see here really, or at least they put up the front, that they don't desire to have children anyway. Why? Because many of these women are, let's just say they, they plan for the, the, the wrong team. This is Savannah Hernandez here in Venice Beach. Now, California is trying to pass a bill to legalize infanticide seven days post-birth. Let's go see what Californians think of the bill. So I prefer that most women make their decisions at eight weeks, but, if, but I'm also in support of 10 months out of the womb. So you think babies should be aborted 10 months after they're born? If, if the mother wants to, yes. I think them kids so if like you want to get a late term abortion like that's up to you you know I've had an abortion too and it's it's it was my choice and I'm happy I had that choice because if you if you're talking about like post birth um, that's not considered an abortion like you can look up abortion in the dictionary and would it be considered murder at that point um, I mean if somebody if somebody were to um, you know abandon their child in a dumpster they would be and they were found like yes they would be charged like there are actual cases of that happening that's child neglect and um, anyone who's putting their child in harm's way like I think um, there should be definitely like things uh, put in place to make sure that children are safe um, anything that is you know, pre-birth, if it involves uh, termination of a fetus, uh, that's considered an abortion. I 100% support it. I've had an abortion myself. I'm not a bad person because uh, I made the choice that was right for me and now I have a life that I enjoy and I wouldn't take it back. Would you guys get an abortion again? Yes. 100%. 100 yeah. times. I'd do it multiple times. Until I feel that I'm ready to parent, um, that's a choice I'll continue to make. So basically, like, if they have their baby, they can neglect them for seven days, and if the baby dies, then they can't be held criminally liable. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, I think, like, I, I agree. I think whatever, like, helps women and helps them achieve their, like, dreams and however that needs to, like, happen is definitely acts to help that is helping all of us. Okay. So they don't desire to have children in the first place. Now, obviously, for many sisters, that's the front they put up. But in their heart of hearts, many of these women are broken. They're traumatized through life experience. So they may put up the front. This is for my choice, my body. I'm a strong, independent woman. And um, my body, my choice. And many of them may choose alternative lifestyles or what have you. But in their heart of hearts, Many of these women, when you get the opportunity to really speak with them one on one, what they desire is a traditional family. OK, I was going to say also the thing that's not spoken about is the after effects that a lot of these women go through depression and so forth, maybe even, you know, to the physical harm and stuff like that. Those, those parts aren't spoken about. They show people smiling and everything when she already said straight out it's killing. Exactly. <laughs> the, 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 the face of the start of it said it's killing. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And that's the point I'm getting to. A lot of this stuff is a front. Okay. These people behind closed doors, yeah, they, they, they sitting up, as you mentioned, they're smiling and they're taking photo ops and, you know, the, the imagery looks good. It looks like they're happy. They're, they're living their best life and they're not being held down by the status quo of society uh, uh, uh they're now progressive and uh, uh they're women who could focus on themselves and their careers all that stuff sounds good before the cameras but behind closed doors a lot of these women okay both i'm going to say white women as well as black women who push this rhetoric behind closed doors they are haunted what's the word i'm looking for tortured or, um depressed there's a lot of things going on with these women behind closed doors that you wouldn't believe okay but this is this is these are photo ops okay but i want to look at the, the picture of the one on the on the uh on the what that would be left what was that left look how proud she looks like as if she's some kind of freedom from from oppression you know right like <laughs> head raised up high y'all can't let me let me make sure i can get the whole picture 
because y'all can't see the whole picture. Okay, let me try to get the whole picture in there. Okay, there's a way I can adjust this. One second. There we go. That's that's better. Let me adjust this here. All right, that's not good. All right, one second. No, nah, that's not good either. All right, let me do it this way. One second. So yeah, let's read that again. Let's read that book of Genesis 1 and 27 again. It's good? That's good? Okay. All right, let me get it back to where it was. Book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 27. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Male and female created he them. To do what? Be fruitful and multiply. Okay? So here it says, Planned Parenthood helps sinners stand with black women every day. Y'all see the Jedi mind tricks. You see the mind control. Planned Parenthood Health Centers serve more than 400,000 black patients every year. You mean the same black patients that the founder stated that she wants to exterminate? Are these the same black patients that are being helped every year by Planned Parenthood? Look at this. Stand with black women. Which means what? Again, Jedi mind trick. Meaning, if you don't stand with Planned Parenthood, that must mean you don't stand with black women. Okay? And these are the things they put out there as a means of trying to create some type of gender war or gender divide between black men and black women. And sisters, sometimes, when they, especially when they go off to college and they adopt these progressive ideas, these liberal ideas, they start to take on they start to take on the propaganda. If you don't stand with me and my freedom with my body and my choice, if you don't stand with Planned Parenthood, then you don't stand with me. Okay, look at this here. A woman with a son, with a child. Okay, giving you the image that this, uh, this organization, this is what this organization wants to produce. Okay, when in reality, if it was up to this organization, both her and this child would be gone. Okay, who let her through the cracks? Okay, and why did she let him through the cracks? And then furthermore, the question is, where is the father? Okay, there's never an image of a full black family being represented on these types of sites. Okay, run by these organizations. One last picture. Again, this says it all. I don't, I don't think this needs much uh, commentary. Okay, got the black fist raised, got the dreads, the sunglasses, um, the shirt to say melanin. <laughs> the, the pro look what the sign says. The problem is the misuse of power, not the color of my skin. You see, again, the mind tricks. Okay, look at this. This is foolishness. Okay. So this shows you these are these these images here. They, they sell these images because they believe when we see this, somehow we believe that this is a sign of black power. OK, when in reality, when we see this in the truth, we see this as this is a sign of anarchy. I'm, I'm going to show you something else that they did, Elder Lawyer, to Go ahead. disrespect us. There's a typo in there. I don't know if you noticed it. Okay. But they literally got that front and center. You would take a picture of this knowing that there's this massive typo going on. Look at the second word. What problem? The problem. Oh, wow. You see how they do oh. it? You see how they do it? See, it's wow. real subtle, but it's like, look at this look at this idiot right here. Right, and this is why she <laughs> needs Planned Parenthood. She this can't even spell. What will she produce? The problem. The problem. The, the problem. The problem. The problem is... 
So this wow. is how they do it. This is where they get us on the news like that and everything. They look for the worst situation they could find just to make us look silly. And they got her standing boldly. Look at her. Boldly. Misspelled. HD and everything. They made sure that's a nice picture. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> mm. I even pick up on that. It's cold. It, it, it's cold how they do it. It's real subtle. You know? Mm. And it's like, listen, they said, listen, she she needs Planned Parenthood because whatever comes out of her is going to be just this uneducated, infidel, just, look, look at this. Ain't winning no spelling bees. No no spelling bees, no education. He, he will not be a rocket scientist or she will not be a rocket scientist that comes out of her. Okay. Now, this is not what I, this, this is not my belief personally. I'm, I'm speaking more so from the perspective and highlighting these things to show that even in them, quote unquote, trying to empower us or claiming to empower us, they making they making mockery of us. OK, now I bet you we get more hatred and we'll get more uh, we'll get more vitriol for pointing these things out than actually pointing out the fact that someone is funding your death. OK, there's a lot there's billions upon billions, maybe even trillions of dollars that go into your death. And we're pointing out. The culprits, but we'll get the hate and the vitriol. And and the thing is, though, Elder Lloyd, also, there's someone paid specifically to go through these images. Mm. I want people to understand that. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we're just picking on the image. They knew what they did when they put that image there. Exactly. <laughs> Somebody could have stopped and said, "Well, hold, hold up. This is misspelled." I, and, and this is deep because I remember going out in the UK the first time we went speaking in the UK. I know this seems like it has no. No connection, but hmm. we were speaking in the UK, right? And uh, Elder Krasiar asked a few of the brethren to go get some signs printed up. And uh, they brought the signs, and <laughs> I remember this like this was yesterday. The, the brother bought the sign, and it was said, it says something like, water turned to blood. But it was spelled, I guess, with, you know, based on the UK accent, they kind of speak a certain kind of way. Mm -hmm. So they spell things kind of similar. But blood was spelled not B-L-O-O-D, it was B L U D. Hmm. Now this seemed like a simple thing, but you know, other across you are, he think got to be just yeah, right. No. Nah. <laughs> so he looked at the sign. He say, "Blood? What the? Blood? B L O O D? You know, how other across you are get." So <laughs> it was like we couldn't even use the sign because it was misspelled. Mm -hmm. And I say that to say that when it comes to the representation of anything, when something is misspelled, that automatically you you, you automatically get discredited. Okay. So, someone in a normal situation would say, well, hold, hold up, this is misspelled. We can't have this as a representation on our site because automatically, with something being misspelled, we become discredited. Okay? But again, as you pointed out, these are the things they need out there to continue to, to push the image, to push the ideology that what they're doing is actually a service to the world because these people are uneducated. These people are stupid. OK, they need they need someone to come in and help them from reproducing their stupidity. OK, and uh, going back here, you see all of this, you see the whole uh, the connection with BLM and they try to somehow associate Planned Parenthood and the work it does with fighting racism. Institutional racism is the pre-existing condition that has left black communities vulnerable to multiple public health crisis. So I. OK, we're officially back. We're just giving a few moments for everyone to come in. We know we were somehow cut off. I don't know what happened in the last stream, but nonetheless, we're back. Wonderful. As you come in, hit the like button. And as you all are coming in again, I just want to make an, annou an announcement that we are accepting enrollments for the upcoming Hebrew and Bible Academy. So please, if you're interested in the upcoming Academy with a lot of the new information we have, as well as updated information we have for the upcoming Academy, please send an email to academychatquestions at gmail.com. Okay, we're back again. We got cut off out of nowhere in the last stream or broadcast, but we're going to keep pushing on. Okay, I think it's time for us to move on. Yeah, we got to fix the problem. <laughs> yeah, fix the prompt. Whatever, whatever the <laughs> problem, whoever that is, she had written on the sign. 
So, um, yeah, let's let's get back into it. All right, beautiful, beautiful. The water AC for getting things back up and running. Okay, let's go back. Okay, let's move on from there. I think we had enough. <laughs> I think we had enough of that. <laughs> All right, and let's uh, let's continue on. We still got a lot to cover. Okay, yeah, we're just talking about BLM. In fact, let me let me just go ahead and just show this real quick. Okay, I'll show it real quick, but we got we got to move on. Okay. Again, I don't want a situation where Elder comes back. He tries to do the broadcast next Wednesday, and the, the channel is just gone. Okay, so I, I want to try to make sure we preserve this channel. A lot of work is going into this channel to ensure that uh, we built it up to you know where things are now. So. We want to try to preserve this channel, all right? So, we were just showing, uh, if we go back here, we were just showing this uh, connection between, um, what is this organization called? BLM and Planned Parenthood, okay? Again, just showing more of the Jedi mind tri tricks, okay? Down here, it has a message Institutional racism is the pre-existing condition that has left the black communities vulnerable to mul multiple public health crises. So what you notice, hopefully you guys are noticing that everything that is thrown in front of you and presented to you as a fight against institutionalized racism is not always a fight against almost never. I, I would go as far as saying it is almost never put in place for a fight against institutionalized racism. I would go as far as to say that a lot of these organizations that claim they are fighting against institutionalized racism are actually there to put forth the agenda and make sure that the end goal of institutionalized racism is met. Okay, and this is one of them. How can they say that they're against institutionalized racism when their founder was a racist? Okay, who wanted to exterminate the black family, the Negro population. I don't think you get more institutionalized uh, racism than that or racist than that. Okay, but moving on. Still got a lot to cover. Because now we got to figure out who's funding these types of organizations. See, we, we speak about Planned Parenthood, but we have to realize that, again, Planned Parenthood is a 501c3 organization, which means that they don't fund themselves. Their funding comes from donations. Their funding comes from support from various places. Okay? Now, I know some people are going to you know, say, well, see, that's what's wrong with 501c3. Listen, we're not 501c3, but at the same time, if someone is 501c3, don't necessarily mean that they are for um, the destruction of their people or what have you. So I want to make that clear. This is not a... It's not a, an attack on 501c3 necessarily. This is just showing that this organization, when we talk about this organization, we have to keep in mind that they are not funding themselves. They're being funded from various places, various people. Okay? So let's see who, are, who some of the funders or donors are of Planned Parenthood. This is from an organization. It's for an organization or from an organization called Foundation for Life. Again, this is probably a pro. I'm not I'm not sure what this organization stands for, so I can't speak for everything. I want to make that clear that it's on their website. But what I will say is that they did a good job in listing the various corporations that are involved with funding Planned Parenthood. Who gives financial support or who gives money to support abortion? That's the question. You can go ahead and read the uh, opening of the Iraq. No way you are investing your time and your treasure. You might be surprised at who gives money to support 
Planned Parenthood. Mm, let me just do this real quick to make sure they can see it. Just make sure they can see it. Okay, great. All right, go ahead. Okay. All right, go ahead, Elder Rock. Let me pull it back up for you. All right. Okay. You might be surprised at who gives money to support Planned Parenthood. The organization Planned Parenthood is the largest provider of abortions in the United States with their reports indicating over 300,000 abortions per year or 30.6% of the nation's abortions. So over 300,000 children a year are aborted at the hands of Planned Parenthood. Go ahead. That is one of every eight patients seen by Planned Parenthood gets an abortion and they do 100, 160 abortions for every one adoption referral. Mm. These are based on the numbers reported by the 68 affiliates in over 700 health centers operating with a budget of $1.3 billion, $553.7 million from tax dollars. Mm. And Read that again. <laughs> Five hundred and fifty three point seven million from tax dollars. Read from where it says these are based. These are based on the numbers reported by the sixty eight affiliates in over seven hundred health centers of operating with a budget of one point three billion. So they have a budget of one point three billion. The question is, where is this one point three billion coming from? How much of it comes from tax dollars? $553.7 million from tax dollars. So from your tax dollars, half a billion is going to Planned Parenthood. Over half a billion of your tax dollars goes to Planned Parenthood. So this is how this is being funded. Go ahead. And the numbers reported in 2015, the group spent $39.3 million on public policy Another sixteen point seven million to engage communities. Right. So again, these are cold words. We hear public policy. Usually, those words like public policy, uh, those are words for you know propaganda, um, getting our message out in, in, in such a way that we can hide our our true beliefs or mask our true beliefs under you know uh, commercials and holding cookouts and various functions and. Uh, sending ice cream trucks in the communities with, with Planned Parenthood flyers. And, you know, it's little things they do. Pull it, you know, uh, 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 get a, a balloon. Uh, what's those the, those places or those uh, structures they have for children where they'll... The bouncy, the be little bounce ball place. You yeah, yeah, like a bouncing <laughs> balloon bouncing. thing. They'll, you know, set that up, <laughs> a balloon castle. They'll have that set up and have the children in there jumping and Planned Parenthood paraphernalia all over the... You know, all over the, the jumping balloon or what have you, just as a way to kind of sell their image. That's usually what they mean by public policy and, you know, how they present themselves and engaging communities. What communities are they engaging? You're going to find out. But reading on. And 4.6 million to refresh our brand. To refresh our brand. In other words, to reinvent themselves, mm -hmm. to try to remove themselves from their stained history. Okay. So that's what they mean by refreshing their brand. Go ahead. However, it's not only the government that fills Planned Parenthood's coffers. So their money does not only come from the government. It does not only come from your tax dollars. Go ahead. According to Second Vote, a website and app that tracks the flow of money from consumers to political causes, more than 25% of Planned Parenthood's $1.3 billion annual revenue comes from private donations. It comes from private donations. Who provides these donations? Read on. Which includes corporate contributions. Which includes corporate contributions, meaning corporations also fund and donate to Planned Parenthood. So along with your tax dollars, there are corporations that we all know and love who are donating to the funding of Black Death. Read on. According to their research, 
These 39 corporations and organizations directly contribute to Planned Parenthood. So these are corporations that you can run them off very quickly that contribute to Planned Parenthood. Starting off? Adobe. Adobe. AT&T. AT&T. Bath and Body Works. Go ahead. Converse. Energizer. Fannie Mae. Johnson & Johnson. Liberty Mutual. Microsoft. Oracle. Progressive. Tostitos, Verizon, Who's that there? American Cancer Society. American Cancer Society. Now, I can't go into every single detail. We all, I, I'm not going to go into details about these corporations because you all know, you know, again, these are corporations that many of us have grown over the years to know and mm -hmm. to some degree have an affinity for. Okay? Many people prefer Microsoft, uh, uh, I guess you would say computers, what have you, and have a special kind of place in their heart for Microsoft. So I don't have to necessarily go into Microsoft, but you these are corporations that you're familiar with that are funding black death. The American Cancer Society, the same time they're telling you that you need to donate to the Cancer Society as a means of finding the cure for cancer, this same corporation is sending off money as a means of funding black death. Okay? So under the, the auspices or the guise of saving life, they're funding the taking of life. Specifically, black life, Latino life. Read on. Avon, Ben and Jerry's, mm -hmm. Deutsche Bank, mm -hmm. Expedia, mm -hmm. Groupon, mm. La Senza, Macy's, Morgan Stanley, PepsiCo, Starbucks, Unilever, Wells Fargo, American Express, Bank of America, Clorox, Dockers, Exxon Mobil, Intuit, Levi Strauss, March of Dimes. Mm -hmm. I didn't know they were still around. Yeah, March of Dimes. <laughs> Again, one of those, another one of those uh, organizations that claim to be a benevolent organization to help people. In reality, they're sending money to kill people. Nike, Pfizer, Susan G. Komen. United Way. Mm -hmm. And then there's more corporations or more organizations that are or have in the past donated to Planned Parenthood. Let's go through these very quickly. Comic Relief, Elton John AIDS Foundation, America, well, Boys and Girls Club, Girl Scouts Clubs, uh, what? Uh, Michael J. Fox Foundation, Muscular Dystrophy Association, Eagles Clubs, mm. oh, I'm sorry, I'm all up there. Yep. Salvation Army, YMCA, Susan G. Cohen Breast Cancer Foundation, Paralyzed v Veterans of America, Roman R Ronald McDonald House Charities, mm. Eagles Clubs, Red Cross, Amnesty International, Campfire, Campfire Girls Incorporated, excuse me, Juvenile Diabetes Foundation, Lions Clubs, Save the children. Save the children. Hmm. But they're sending money to kill the children. Kill your children. More specifically, your black children. According to Margaret Sanger. According sure. to Margaret Sanger. I'm, I'm glad you yeah, put that out there. Sure we make that clear. That ain't according <laughs> to us. This is according to Margaret Sanger. If we go back to their website, okay, who are the poster children? Okay. Who are they targeting? Okay. Who are they targeting? Look at this. Who are they targeting? Okay. Who's the poster children? Who's the mascot? Okay. Look at she. You can tell she got just anger issues. The spirit of anger is just, man, all over this sister. Looking serious as a mascot for Planned Parenthood. Now, again, I don't know this sister. She could just be a, a model or just be a, you know, a lot of these people, again, these are just photo ops. There's no telling what these people truly believe in. But, however, they're being used more specifically as mascots for this organization. Okay. So, when we go back here, and we see all of these organizations, okay? And there's more, but there's another list. This is a more extensive list, where there's more corporations that are listed. Allstate, AutoZone. Okay, 3M. 
Okay. And they probably would have met up just saying everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everybody. Every everybody, ADP, all of these organizations. People who or organizations or corporations that you believe have nothing to do with, you know, anything regarding so-called reproductive health or abortion and things of that nature. What we're trying to show you, brothers and sisters, Coach, Clorox, ConAgra, Monsanto, Progressive Insurance. Okay. And many of these corporations, they may do it for write-off purposes or what it would have you. I'm not sure how these corporations work. They may do it for certain tax purposes or what have you, but nonetheless, these are the corporations. Look at this extensive list. Western Union, Whirlpool, okay, Victoria's Secret, Vanity Fair, Timberland, Tiffany & Company, Taco Bell, T-Mobile, Subway, Subaru. Yeah, but see, here's the thing. That would be PR suicide. If you if you didn't believe in that, right, and you've attached your name to it being such a corporate sized thing, like huge monster type company, right, that would be like corporate suicide, right. It would. <laughs> so, man, I'm just saying, it yeah. doesn't sound too PR friendly. Yeah, you know? it doesn't. But see, this <laughs> is why when we we showed you earlier, when, when we brought out earlier, they were saying that they uh, pay a large portion of their money for what. Uh, rechanging or mm -hmm. reshifting their image. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And 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 uh, public policy and engaging. In, they have to pay a lot of money for image purposes, so that these corporations who do invest or do put money in Planned Parenthood, they want to make sure that we don't get that bad PR. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that we don't get those connections back to the, you know, the the. Uh, the horrible past or what they, they will claim to be the horrible past of eugenics and things of that nature, not realizing that they're carrying out, out the same exact goal of its founder. They just found a way to repackage it and make it seem like it's for the benefit. It's for, as they say, reproductive health causes. Okay, let me make sure we're still here. Okay. So, these are the corporations who are investing in your death, in your demise, in your extermination. Okay? Pretty much everyone. And someone, some people may say, well, should we boycott these corporations? It would almost be impossible. As many of these corporations that are involved in this. Okay? Who don't have an account with Bank of America? <laughs> okay? Who don't use Microsoft? Okay? Who don't drive some of the vehicles that are presented by these particular corporations? It would be almost impossible. And let's get this real quick out of Deuteronomy chapter 28, okay, where it says, uh, you shall go to your enemy for one of all things. Let's get that real quick in Deuteronomy. Let me pull it out. Here's the reality of this captivity, okay? Because a lot of times in our mind, we say, let's boycott. And to some degree, we should. We should be more careful um, when it comes to... Uh, how we spend our money with these particular organizations, these corporations. But the reality is that it's to a degree where the, the conspiracy is so deep that it's almost impossible to avoid all of these corporations at all, at all times. Okay. So let's uh, go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and let's go to verse number, I believe it's 48. Okay. Deuteronomy 28 and 48 to kind of get you in the mindset to understand that we're not saying that you should just openly go and support these corporations, but understand that if you can't avoid these corporations 100%, that's just the reality of this captivity. Okay? Deuteronomy 28 verse 48. Therefore thou shalt serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against so thee. So you shall serve your enemies which the Lord your God shall send against you. Go ahead. In hunger and in thirst. And in nakedness and in want of all things. In hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. So, if you want food, to some degree, you're going to have to go to your enemy. It just so happens that some of the corporations who donate, donate to Black Death, who donate to Planned Parenthood, some of these corporations own your grocery stores. They own the products that are in your grocery stores. Okay? So, to some degree, you're not going to be able to avoid them. In thirst, think about some of think of the Pepsi Co Corporation. I'm saying that people uh, uh, drink Pepsi or should drink Pepsi, but 
they are a large corporation that when it comes to beverages, even beverages that are, that are, that are not openly labeled as Pepsi Coke or Pepsi Cola are owned by Pepsi Cola. Even some of your so-called healthy alternatives, which are presented as so-called healthy alternatives that you think have nothing to do with Pepsi Cola are owned by Pepsi Cola. Okay. It says in nakedness, you notice they had Levi Strauss, which produces what? Levi jeans. Okay. Various other corporations that produce clothing are invested financially and probably ideologically in Planned Parenthood. Okay, for those who think maybe we should boycott, yes, to some degree we should, but the reality is that the nature of this captivity, you're not going to be able to 100% boycott all of these organizations. Why? Let's read it again from the top. Deuteronomy 28, 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. And that's where, that's the position we're in now. We're in servitude to our enemies, which the Lord sent against us. Read on. In hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And in want of all things. You need insurance. Where do you go? Progressive. Okay. You want to do your taxes. Where do you go? Into it. Okay. All things are associated with who? Your enemies. The people who have you in captivity. The people who are financially invested in your death and the death of your children. Okay. So it sounds good. Okay. But the reality is that to some degree. You're not, you're not going to be able to 100% avoid these companies. You need your scotch tape. Where do you go? You get that 3M scotch tape. Okay. They invest or they donate to Planned Parenthood. Okay. So this is the reality of the war we're in. And this is how, how deep the conspiracy goes. Okay, now you can go in and look this up in your own time and get more information in your own time. You got to continue. I'm already past the time I wanted to do this. Okay, or I had severed out for this. Okay, they got Jack in the box. Okay, all of these corporations <laughs> invested in your death. Johnson and Johnson. We already know Johnson and Johnson is, is suspect. Okay, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Kraft Heinz, L.L. Bean. Okay, who don't like a you know a pair of LL Bean rain boots or what have you, whatever they sell. Okay, Lee's, Liberty Mutual, Lincoln Financial Group, Mars Incorporated. Who don't like a Snickers every now and then? Okay, uh, a pack of M and M's. Okay, I know we're gonna get a whole list of people yeah, in the chat. Know, man, uh, don't, gotta, don't eat them M and M's. They got careful, that red. Careful what you talking about. <laughs> Now, listen, I, I, I don't know the last time I had an M&M, but nonetheless, listen, people have their, their guilty pleasures, man. If you want to pop open a pack of Skittles every now and then, that's your business. Yeah, but no orange drink, man. That, that was causing disease. And you remember the orange drink? Yeah, yeah, the orange the, drink. The orange drink. Yeah, orange <laughs> pop and all that madness. <laughs> yeah, hugs. You know, growing up in Philly, I don't know what y'all call them, hugs. Huggies, and, huggies, yeah, yeah, yeah. days, soda, stay away from that <laughs> stuff, you know. But nonetheless, um... Listen, you're not going to be able to avoid all of... Look at all of this. PetSmart. You go to get your pet products. PetSmart. They're invested in the, in the death of your children, of bringing black children in the earth. Publix. That's a grocery store. Not prominent here in uh, Pennsylvania and other places, but uh, you go to down south. I think Publix is very prominent down there. Quick Roats. Ralph Lauren. Quick Books. Okay? These are, these are all people who at one time or another donated... To Planned Parenthood. Okay. All right. Let's move on. We got a lot more to cover. Here's a list. We're not necessarily going to go over this, but this is a good website called Open Secrets. Um, they have a list of various uh, sponsors of political either campaigns or those who have set up. It says here, individual donors gave $471, $200 plus contributions to this pack. In the 2019-2020 election cycle. And they have actual names of investors. Personal investors who have invested. And donated to Planned Parenthood. Okay. Here's another one. Mackenzie Scott. Donates a record. 275 million. 
to Planned Parenthood. So even individuals, I believe there's images when you type in her name, there's images of her. Okay. If you can read this real quick, just the opening, you can see, let me make sure they all can see it. You can see that everyone is invested in your death, in your demise, in your destruction. Go ahead. Right here, March. March 23rd, billionaire philanthropist uh, Mackenzie Scott donated $275 million to women's health care provider Planned Parenthood. The largest gift from a single donor in the no, excuse me, organization's more than 100-year history, Planned Parenthood said on Wednesday. Mm, mm, mm. So this is the largest donation in the 100-year history of this organization being given by Mackenzie Scott. Read on. The donation, which is part of Scott's pledge to give away the majority of her wealth, was made to Planned Parenthood's national office and 21 regional affiliates. Right, and I want to say this real quick. I don't know, I don't know too much about Mackenzie Scott, but a lot of these people, these big donors, these billionaire donors, they make you think that this is out of the kindness of their heart. When in reality, again, there is tax write-offs, I believe, that come with donating to these types of organizations. But also, a lot of these people are raised with these ideologies. They have parents and, and, and whoever their guardians were uh, are who were, were steeped in the ideologies and philosophies of eugenics. So they grow older and they become the heads of these corporations. They become billionaires and all of a sudden they, out of the blue, become philanthropists. And their philanthropy always, somehow, some way, comes back to the abortion and death of black children. Okay? Campaigns to go to different countries and juice up black children. Okay? And what they call underprivileged children. Okay? Go ahead. Scott, who is now married to Dan Jewett, a Seattle science teacher, received a 4% stake in Amazon.com. As part of her divorce from Amazon founder and billionaire Jeff Bezos. Right. So this is the former wife of Jeff Bezos. Okay. The head of Amazon. So she took whatever her stake was. It says she received a 4% stake in Amazon Inc. And she used that, a portion of that, to give to Planned Parenthood. To show how dedicated she is. Not to reproductive health but to the death of your so-called African-American or black children. Okay? Because that's, what, that's what it's going to. And let me show you something real quick. Okay? Of course, we know about the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. We know they have a connection as well with Planned Parenthood. Okay? You can read that in this Wikipedia article, but we got we to gotta move forward. Here you see their actual corporation here saying that we are working to empower women and girls to take charge of their health enabling them to make informed decisions about family planning. You hear those words, family planning? Sounds like a nice, you know, a nice little buzzword that when you think of family planning, you think of the goals of the future of your children and their education and the, the, the health and wealth of your family, so on and so forth. These are cute words, which simply means what? Either contraception to prevent your children from coming into the earth or outright abortion. That's all this means. So this is what they mean. When they say things such as we're trying to clean up our image or we're trying to refresh our image, this is a part of refreshing their image using these buzzwords. Now, you can check this out in your first, I mean, in your own time. If you can read that real quick. Contraceptions are one of the most powerful tools we have. Are one of the most powerful tools we have. It puts the power in the hands of the young girls and women to plan their families. What about the men? It says it puts the power in the hands of young girls and women to plan their families. Well, in order to plan a family, it takes a man. So what does the man have to say about the planning of his family? Well, I guess that doesn't matter. Okay. So in other words, you're feeding this propaganda to young girls as a means of preventing them from either coming together with men to build families or giving them an opportunity to deal with men, as you see here in American society, without the responsibility of having to deal with the family. 
Okay? That's all this means. Okay? Turning their women loose like they've done here with their, uh, uh, their, their, their uh, what do they call it? Their feminist agenda here in America. That's all this means. Okay? Read on. And quite honestly, to plan their futures. Mm, and quite honestly, to plan their future. So again, you hear this term of them planning their future, planning their future, not realizing that their children are their future. Okay, and this is a quote from Melinda French Gates. This is from their website. This is not someone putting this on them. This is the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation website. Okay, here's another article telling us that Bill Gates' father was the head of Planned Parenthood and inspired his population control view, views. So that, as I mentioned earlier, you think that this is something that a lot of these so-called billionaires... This is something that is generated from their own thoughts, their own mind, their own passion, when in reality, they're indoctrinated from youth with a lot of these ideas. And they're placed as the heads of these corporations and, and, and as a way of actually uh, having the power, the money, and the influence of fulfilling what they were indoctrinated with as a child with a lot of these eugenicist philosophies, Okay. Now, moving on. Okay, we keep asking a question. Who is being affected by these abortions? 63,459,781 babies have been killed in abortions since Roe v. Wade in 1973. Again, 63 million. 459,781 babies have been killed in abortion since Roe v. Wade in 1973. Let's go here very quickly. Black abortions by numbers. More than crime, more than accidents, more than cancer, heart disease, and AIDS, abortion has taken more black American lives every, than every other cause of death combined since 1973. So who, who is being disproportionately affected by Planned Parenthood and abortion? The black community. More than crime. Okay, Salakia, so let me put it back here. Okay, just to show you those other articles very quickly. I'm just going to glance over them. Okay, you see that one? Okay, Bill Gates and his father. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and the quote is here. You can find this on their website. Okay. So uh, going back here, more than crime, is they're telling you they got to get tough on crime because that's the, that's the biggest problem in the black community. And, and the reality is that, that, no, that's not the biggest problem in the black community. More than accidents, more than cancer, heart disease, and AIDS. Abortion has taken more black American lives then every cause of death combined, okay, not separately, but combined since 1973. In the United States, the abortion rate for black women is more than three times that of white women. So what are we telling you? When, when people, when we put this information out, usually we hear things such as not all, or we hear white women do it too. The reality is that it's not affecting white women the same way it's affecting black women. White women are not doing it at the same rate as black women. So that's why we're honing in specifically on what? Black women. Okay? So for black women, the abortion rate for black women is more than three times that of white women. So all of that propaganda you see on these websites is geared towards who? Black women. They're the ones getting the abortions. It's targeting black women. They are the ones getting the abortions. Okay. So it says more than 800 babies are aborted every day. Not every week. Not every month. But every day in our country. Black babies. Black babies. This is not all, not all babies. Black babies specifically. This tragedy continues to impact population levels of American, African Americans in the United States. Last thing I'm going to read here, more than 20 million black babies have been aborted since 
1973 Roe v. Wade. So of, of that 69 or that over 63 million, 20 million of that have been black babies. And they're telling us that we're the minority. They're telling us that we, uh, we're a small portion of the population and we need to unite with this group. We need to unite with that group as a means of propelling ourselves politically and financially. When in reality, we're killing our political power. We're killing the power that we have in numbers. We're killing the number of potential successful black children who would become men and women who could possibly change the condition of the black community. We've killed it off. Okay. So many people may ask, what is the purpose of all this? Why, why would someone want to do this politically? And before I do that, let me just play one clip. This is for educational purposes only. Okay. This is for educational purposes only. Many of you have heard this. Many of you have seen this. Okay, I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to hear it, but I'm going to play it anyway. Okay, you can see the title. You can go ahead and check this out when you get the opportunity. Many, again, many of you have heard this. Many of you have seen this. Okay. Let me go ahead and play this. making a donation today? Let me put you through to Tim in our development office. Is there anyone I can speak with right now? Me. Mm -hmm. And who am I speaking with now? My name is Lisa. He's, what's your position? Administrative assistant. Okay. Well, okay, fair I, use. Abortion, does that apply to minorities too? If you specifically want it to underwrite an abortion for a minority person, you can target it that way. You can, you can specify that that's how you want it spent. Okay, yeah, because there's... So I de there's definitely way too many black people in Ohio, so I'm just trying to do my part. Okay, whatever. Well, blacks especially need abortions, too. So that's what I'm trying to do. Well, for whatever reason, we'll accept the money. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay I'm trying to adjust the screen for you all. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I know the screen wasn't the best. Okay, but hopefully you got the message. Hopefully you got the message. Okay, were you all able to hear that? So yes, you all think that when people are donating... They're simply donating for, you know, just general purposes, whatever Planned Parenthood, because Planned Parenthood, according to their website, they have other services for reproductive health. They do provide other services, but the ultimate purpose for their creation, according to its founder, was to exterminate the Negro population. This is the reason why they were created. Everything else is just, that's just fluff or that's just, you know, other things that may come with the organization. Okay. But there isn't such thing of, as, as calling up Planned Parenthood and saying that I want to donate finances specifically for the purpose of aborting or exterminating a black child. Let me play it one more time. Okay. One more time. Fair use for educational purpose on, purposes only. making a donation today? Let me put you through to Tim in our development office. Is there anyone I can speak with right now? It's me. Mm -hmm. And who am I speaking with now? My name is Lisa. He's, what's your position? Administrative assistant. Okay. When I underwrite abortion, does that apply to minorities too? 
if you specifically want it to underwrite an abortion for a minority person, you can target it that way. You can you can specify that that's how you want it spent. Okay, yeah, because there's so de there's definitely way too many black people in Ohio. So I'm just trying to do my part. Okay, whatever. Well, blacks especially need abortions too. So the person said, I'm just trying to do my part, and Planned Parenthood says, okay, whatever. Okay, great. Thank you. So you can specifically, now I think the person who did this, you know, they call posing as a uh, a racist donor. I'm not sure if they themselves were, were racist or what have you. I think they call just to kind of just to see if this is possible, just to see that if I call up and I say specifically, I'm a, I'm a racist, uh, uh, white supremacist, whatever they call themselves, and I want to donate specifically for this purpose. Will they accept my money? And the answer was yes. To show you that Planned Parenthood, they don't care where they get the money from, who's giving the money and for what purpose they're giving the money. OK, if they say I want this specifically for a black child, they'll mark it down and make sure that it's used specifically for a black child. OK. So hopefully you all heard that. Again, many of you have heard this tape before. It does exist. And yes. OK. This is the ultimate goal of Planned Parenthood. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get into it. Why would they do such a thing? Many people may be asking, well, why would an organization be invested solely in eliminating a specific segment of the population? Well, you're going to find out that this is not the first time in our history as the children of Israel. Yes. For those who may be happening upon this for the first time, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, Hispanics, and Native American Indians are the children of Israel. Okay? And in our history as the children of Israel, this is not the first time we've faced such an adversity. Okay? There was a time of our history going back to the land of Egypt where the Egyptians came up with the same exact measure to eliminate what they consider to be a threat from the Israelite or quote unquote black population. Let's get that in the book of Exodus, the first chapter, starting at the, let's get straight to the point. The book of Exodus, chapter one, and verse number five. Exodus chapter one, verse five. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were seventy souls, for Joseph was in Egypt already. And Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. And the children of Israel were fruitful, and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and waxed exceeding mighty. And the land was filled with them. So what happened with the children of Israel? And the children of Israel were fruitful. They were fruitful, meaning they had many children. Go ahead. Increased abundantly. And they increased abundantly. Their population rose and increased at a rapid pace. Read on. And multiplied. And they multiplied. They continued, they continued throughout their existence in the land of Egypt to grow and grow and grow and have more children and grow and grow and grow. And grow. Read on. Wax exceeding mighty mighty. And they waxed exceeding mighty. If they wanted to, they, create, they could create an independent nation within themselves, totally separate from Egyptian society. They could come together. They could have their own financial system, their own military, okay, their own health apparatus, their own education apparatus. They could have all of these things separate from the Egyptians if they desired. Read on. And the land was filled with them. And the land was filled with Israelites. Go ahead. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. So Joseph had a great reputation with the Pharaoh of Egypt that was in power when Joseph came, when Joseph came into Egypt. Okay. Joseph did many great things for the land of Egypt. Okay. 
And because of that, he had great respect among, amongst the Egyptians. He was held in high regard. But the Bible says that there rose up a new king, which knew not Joseph, which did not acknowledge the great things that Joseph did for the land of Egypt. Read on. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than they we. They are more and mightier than we. Their population has grown more vast than our population. They're getting stronger than us, population-wise. Okay, read on. Come on, let us deal wisely with them. Let us deal wisely with them, meaning let's not outright come, up, come out and attack them. Let us not outright come out and say that we are in a conspiracy and a plan to exterminate the children of Israel. Let's do it more wisely. Let's use propaganda. Let's use what we would call today Jedi mind tricks to convince the children of Israel to accept their own death, to make a covenant to accept their own extermination. Okay, read on. Lest they multiply and they come to pass, then when they, excuse me, when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemy. So they were afraid that if an enemy came against Egypt, that the children of Israel would look amongst themselves and say that we're more and mightier than the Egyptians. Let's join unto our enemies and overthrow the Egyptians and thereby become our own independent nation. Now, this was their fear. This is not something we were thinking about ourselves. These are the things, these were the conversations they were having. Fast forwarding to today. You may have small segments of our people in various organizations throughout various ideologies that are talking about coming together, being self-sufficient, uh, uh, protecting our own communities, policing our own communities, growing our own food. That's just a small segment of our society. The larger portion of our society is not concerned with those things. Okay? But from a governmental standpoint, from a political standpoint, from a militaristic standpoint, you're looking at the potential of what can happen. Not what's happening now, but what can happen. A, suppose a, a spiritual phenomenon takes place or something happens which ignites these people to want to come together and have an idea of being totally self-sufficient, policing themselves, protecting themselves, building their own schools, building their own financial systems, okay? Creating their own industries, trade. What happens if these people separate totally from us and now become our competition? This is what they're thinking, okay? And it's the same thing the Egyptian counselors under the Pharaoh were thinking back then. Okay, go ahead. And fight against us, and so get them out of the land. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. Mm -hmm. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pithom and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. So the more they oppressed us, the more they tried to prevent us from having children, we just continued to produce and have more children. And we grew and we grew and we grew and we got mightier and mightier and mightier. So simply just giving us burdens of work did not prevent us from having children. So what happened? And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. They were grieved because of us. They couldn't stand us, couldn't stand the sight of us. Couldn't stand the smell of us. Couldn't stand the thought of us. Okay? Every time they turned around, they seen the, the, the population of Israelites rising and rising and rising. And it became a threat. Now, the children of Israel didn't necessarily pose a threat, weren't necessarily seeking to pose a threat. But again, from a political standpoint, speaking about the Egyptians and their cabinet, their place of power, from a militaristic standpoint, they have to plan for all eventualities. What if they decided to come against us? What if they decided to unite against our enemies? What if they decided to become independent from us and become our competitors? What happens? 
they will overthrow us. Okay? So it's the same exact thing today. So people, if they ask, well, what would be the purpose of exterminating black people? Okay? Many people believe, many of our people believe that we're nothing. Many of our people believe that there's nothing important about us. Why kill us? If you're going to kill a threat, you know, why not go after another country who's a, a, a competitor or, or something to that effect? Why not go after another government of another nation? Why focus on us? We're nothing. We're nobody. We're in the ghettos. We're uneducated. This is what a lot of our people think about themselves. This is what other people may think concerning us. But from a political, militaristic, governmental standpoint, as they're examining us, they're looking at what if. They're looking at that big what if. What if a spiritual phenomenon just takes place and awaken these people to unite on one accord? What will that mean for us? Okay? And that's a problem they don't want to face. Okay? So they try propaganda. They try over uh, over uh, bearing us with burdens, but it doesn't work. So now they have to take things further. Read on. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, in mortar, and in brick, and in all manner of service in the field. All their service, when they made them serve, was with rigor. Mm -hmm. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Shipra, and the name of the other Pua. And he said, When ye do the office of a midwife... <clears throat> To the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools, it is be a son. If it be a son, you shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. So they said to the midwives, if there be a Hebrew woman upon the, the stool, meaning the birthing stool, and the child that proceeds from the womb, if it be a boy child or a man child, a male child, then you shall kill him upon the stool. Why the, the male children specifically? Because the males are the ones that create the nation. Okay, the seed of the nation comes from the man. They didn't necessarily worry about the women or the female children because if an Egyptian was to take a Hebrew woman and have a child with her, that child is an Egyptian. That's adding to the Egyptian population. But if you kill the men children of the Hebrews, okay, you kill off their ability to reproduce their race, to reproduce their nation. Okay? So the whole idea of eugenics, killing off a specific race for a specific purpose, for a political purpose, for a militaristic purpose, for financial purposes, this is not exclusive to America and Planned Parenthood. They're just instituting an old system that was done against us in the land of ancient Egypt. It's the same exact system. Read on. But the mid midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. Mm -hmm. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing and have saved the men children alive? And the midwife said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. So in other words, <laughs> the midwives first and foremost did not heed the Pharaoh's command to kill the male children because they feared God. They had dignity. They had honor. Okay? So the Most High eventually rewarded these midwives. But when the Pharaoh came and asked the midwives because they had to give answer, they had to report to the Pharaoh. So what they said to the Pharaoh is that, you know, he asked, why didn't you kill these children? And they said that the children of Israel women are not like the Egyptian women. They're lively, meaning they're full of life and vigor. Okay. Before we even get to these women, to get to the birthing stool, before we get into the room, the women had already pushed the child out themselves. Okay, it says what that the children are are what before we err come into the uh, before we err. Okay. What was that last uh, one you, you read? The, okay, because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively. They're lively. They're <clears throat> full of strength and vigor. Go ahead. And delivered and are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. Meaning they are delivered. Meaning they had the child before the midwife come in. Okay. 
The, the, the child is already here before we get into the room. That's how, that's how vigorous and strong and vibrant and lively these women are in giving birth. Read on. Therefore, God dealt well with... One second. Dealt well with... Uh, with the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. And it came to pass, because the midwives feared God, that he made them houses. And Pharaoh charged all his people, so saying... So he blessed, he blessed, the Most High blessed the midwives. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's a, that's, that's, that's a testimony for today. A lot of times we look at these situations where we're being asked to do things which are against our ethics. Okay? From people in very high position. And we may go ahead and do it just because we're either fear of losing the job or what have you. But if you stand for your for if you stand on your foundation on your rock, which is Christ and the Most High, you will be rewarded. Okay, and that's what happened with these women. They back then it was different. Today the most you may get is fired from your job. Back then, if you didn't heed the commands of your supreme ruler, you could be put to death. Okay. But these women stood in the face of all that because they feared the Most High. And because of it, they were blessed. Okay, go ahead. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save alive. So he ended up weaponizing the whole population, saying that if you see a Hebrew child being born, a Hebrew male child running around Egypt, you are to cast him into the river. You ought to put him to death, okay? And that's what happened. Now we're seeing a situation where they don't have to come out with full force to murder Israelite or, quote-unquote, black children. Why? Because, and I hate to say it, I know we may catch flack for it, I know we're going to say or hear not all, but black women are willingly going down to the clinic and casting their children into the river. They are willingly going to the clinic and killing their male children and female children upon the stool. They're doing it willingly. They're even giving the image that black women are fighting for these rights. Now, I don't necessarily believe that a large majority of our sisters are fighting for these so-called rights. I don't believe that's the case. This is all photo ops and mm -hmm. you know this is propaganda okay let me get this in here so you all can see it one second I was gonna say this though but by being silent though it's still being complicit with it exactly you know, because we can't we can't speak up about it you know we, we we don't exist apparently in these pictures we don't we're not even in the in the picture we didn't do anything we didn't the baby just was immaculate conception or something exactly so we have to be able to stand up in, in uh, with accountability because a lot of times it's, it's back and forth. I noticed in chat even somebody said it where it's like, oh, this is the male's fault. He told me to get it. Oh, it's the woman's fault. Listen, no. Deal with your own side of it yeah. and we'll be able to weather this storm. But if we're going to keep doing that, forget it. Exactly. <laughs> okay. And if the man told you to go do it, listen, you both agreed to, to do what God uh, killed the Egyptians for mm -hmm. or revenged upon the Egyptians what they did to you in the, in the ancient past. So I don't care if the woman did it by herself. I don't care if the man did it or told the woman to go do it. Still, it goes to the point that we are willingly killing our children. Okay? And again, as Elder Iraq stated, when we look at the imagery, there's no men in the imagery. Okay? They're telling you independently. This right here is telling you independently as a woman, even though you did not independently have the, ch the child by yourself. They're telling you independently to go down to the clinic because this is for your empowerment. Because we stand with you. We stand with black women. It don't say we stand with black families or we stand with black men. It says we stand with black women. Okay, so this is who the target is. Okay, so listen, we know, listen, we'll be here all day trying to explain every single scenario and every single situation. Mm -hmm. That's impossible. Okay, I, I'm already here longer than uh, I, I thought and desired to be here to, to be on this lesson. I wanted one hour, one hour and a half. <laughs> I'll be here another three hours trying to explain every single scenario that goes on in somebody's household. That's not what we're here for. We're here to give an overall message of what is happening with 
the funding of Black Death, but also the covenant we made in agreement with killing off ourselves. There's an agenda that has been set against us, a conspiracy against us to what? Exterminate the Negro population. Okay? At one point, we saw it as a threat. We tried to fight against it. It got so unbearable for us that the Most High had to step in. And this time, we are willingly going down to the clinic and taking heed to Pharaoh's command. That's the difference. Okay? But uh, let's get off of this story here. We got the most of that. Now let's finish it off with a few precepts. What does God think about abortion? We're going to run through these very quickly. What does the Most High think about abortion? You did break you got Okay. All right. So we're going, to, we're going to take the next 10 to 15 minutes going through these scriptures. Again, telling you what does God think about abortion? Let's start, start off in the Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse number 1 in the Apocrypha. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon, 7 and 1 in the Apocrypha. Okay. And many of us, because many of us may be asking a question, well, what does God think about all of this? Okay. And we're going to show you what God thinks about this. And before we do so, we're first going to go to the book of Wisdom of Solomon, the seventh chapter in the first verse. We're going to take it down to verse six to show you that the Bible actually documents the process of producing children from the bedroom to the delivery room. Okay. The Most High captures it all in his scriptures so that we don't think that we're doing something new in this society that didn't exist, that the Bible didn't have knowledge of, or the Most High didn't have knowledge of, or the prophets did not have knowledge of. Okay? As the scripture says, there's nothing new under the sun. And when you go into the Bible, you're going to see that the every aspect of producing a child is documented from the bedroom all the way to the delivery room. So let's get that real quick. Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 1. Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 1. I myself also am a mortal man, mm -hmm. like to all, and the offspring of him that was first made of the earth. And the offspring of him that was first made of the earth, meaning we are all offspring of Adam. Okay, read on. And in my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of ten months. And in my mother's womb I was fashioned to be flesh in the time of ten months. Okay, read on. Being compacted in blood. Of the seed of man. Of the seed of man. So it takes the seed of man in order to produce a child and within the, the womb of a woman. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And the pleasure that came with sleep. And the pleasure that came with sleep. That's to be fruitful and multiply. That's the mutual coming together of a man and a woman. To do what? Produce children. Read on. And when I was born, I drew in the common air and fell upon the earth, which is of like nature. Mm -hmm. And the first voice which I uttered was crying. As all others do. Mm -hmm. I was nursed in swaddling clothes. And that was cares. Mm -hmm. For there is no king that had any other beginning of birth. There is no king that had any other entering of birth. As I mentioned earlier. We wonder why. We're in a position where we claim that we are. Uh, what do they say? Uh, we're a, a small percentage of the population as they claim. Okay. We're still fighting for certain rights. We're still looking to. Uh, rise up independently from the ashes, if you will. Okay? When in reality, we're actually killing off potential kings, if you will. Killing off potential queens, if you will. Not necessarily kings in the, in, in the sense of uh, people who are ruling over countries. Again, we're still in captivity. But there are children who could be born in this earth that can change the conditions of the people drastically. That can change the condition of their community drastically. All of them going down the drain. Not even given a chance to, to change and affect their community. Okay? And sometimes, and let me make this clear. There's nothing wrong with quote-unquote family planning. When I say family planning, I'm talking about true family planning. Examining your situation and saying, Is this the best conducive environment to bring forth children? And if not, if we desire to have children, and this is not the best conducive environment to bring forth children, what do we need to do to create that environment that is best suited to bring forth a child? There's nothing wrong with that. Okay? 
But I, I mention that because a lot of times we look at our financial situation and because of that, our people may decide, well, I don't have the money to take care of the child. Let me go down to the abortion clinic. What you don't realize is that the child you just killed or is considering to kill could be a child. I'm not saying that's the, I'm not saying look at your child as a lottery ticket, but <laughs> that could be the child that can grow up and change your condition drastically. Okay? You're just thinking about the finances when that child can grow up and become something successful, something great in a society that can change your life forever. Okay? Obviously, you must invest in that child. Obviously, you must put time in that child, which is why you want to try to create, create the best conducive environment for the child. You must take on the family planning and not allow Planned Parenthood to come in under the guise of planning your family, but in reality, wants to destroy and exterminate you and your family. Okay? The, re the responsibility to plan for your family is not on Planned Parenthood. It's on you. Okay? But I'm saying this because, and I, I'm not saying be irresponsible, but what I'm saying is that you may be looking at your condition now, but watering that seed and giving time into that child, investing in that child, that child can grow up to be something so great that you would not have ever believed. How many times we hear those stories of people who are famous and rich and have some type of influence and power in this, in this society who were told by their parents that we were considering to abort you. We were considering to kill you as a child. But something told us to hold off, to hold back. Or maybe a single mother. Something told me to hold back. And here it is today. That person is, is wealthy, rich, famous, is able to actually change the impoverished condition of that parent. Again, not saying to look at your child as a lottery ticket. Not saying that's always going to be the, be the case. But these are the things we have to think about when we are considering exterminating a life you can get up your lottery too what about the, the the actual child being there when you get older to, to actually look after you exactly you, you just got rid of the person who may have been there thick and thin to help you when you get old exactly and these are the things and see this goes back to the earlier thing where they're talking about think about uh, your future your body well the question is what happens when you now get old <laughs> right i mean it's it's the inevitable we must all grow old and get aged and eventually pass on. But in those older years, when you no longer are able to take care of yourself, you're going to want someone to be there to help you. Okay. What happens if you decide to kill off your potential help in the future? Okay. So these are the things we have to consider. All right. But reading on. Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 6. For all men have one interest into life and the light going out. Wherefore I prayed and understanding was given me. I called upon God and the spirit of wisdom came to me. That's it on that. So mm -hmm. again, we're showing you that the most high documents every aspect of birth from the bedroom to the delivery room. Now let's go a little bit deeper. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter four, verse one through two. Okay. Genesis chapter 4, 1 through 2. And Adam knew Eve, his wife. And it says, Adam knew Eve, his wife. Go ahead. And she conceived. And she conceived. This is the process of how children are brought into the earth. When it says he knew her, we're going to show you what that means. It goes on to say that when Adam knew his wife, she conceived. Sidebar. This shows that Adam is the father of Cain. Okay. I want to make that clear. There's a lot of theories out there and philosophies out there. According to the Bible, as it is written, Adam is the father of Cain. Okay, read on. And bear Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. I have gotten a man from the Lord. How? Her and her husband came together. Adam knew her. She conceived and she gave birth. Through that process, she acquired a man from the Lord. And that's what Cain means in Hebrew, to acquire. This is the first born child into the earth. Through Adam and Eve. Okay. Read on. Verse 2. And she again bare his brother Abel. So Adam knew his wife again. They came together again. She conceived again. She gave birth again. And she named this child Abel. 
Read on. And Abel was a keeper of sheep. He was a keeper of sheep. Go ahead. But Cain was a tiller of and the ground. Cain was a tiller of the ground. So these same children that they brought forth were now able to actually help in what? Domestic duties. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we just look at the moment of we have a child and this child for the time being seems like a burden. But as that child gets older, that child is now able to take on responsibility which in turn helps the health of the family, helps change the condition of the family. Okay, but now just a quick precept. Let's go back to Genesis 4 and 1. Let's read that again. Genesis 4 and 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife. And Adam knew Eve, his wife. What does the Bible mean when it says that Adam knew Eve, his wife? Let's go to the book of Numbers 31 and 17. Numbers 31, verse 17. Okay, again, the Bible says Adam knew Eve, his wife. We're going through the process of producing children from the bedroom to the delivery room. Okay, Numbers, excuse me. Go, go ahead. Numbers chapter 31, verse 17. Now, therefore, kill every male among the little ones, and mm -hmm. kill every woman that have known man by lying with him. Mm, that have what? That have known man by lying with him. So when it says that Adam knew Eve, his wife, to know someone is a euphemism, meaning to lie with them. Okay? So when it says Adam knew his wife, it means that he lay with his wife. She conceived, and eventually after nine months, or as it says, wisdom of Solomon in the process of ten months, she gave birth, or gave birth to a child. Okay? Read that again, Numbers 31, 17. Numbers 31 and 17. Now therefore kill every male among the little ones. And kill every woman that have known man. That have known man. By what? lying with him. By lying with him. That's what it means to know. Or he knew her. Or he knew her. That's a euphemism. Meaning to lie with her. Okay, let's move on to the book of Psalms 127 verse number 3. Okay. To show you. How the Most High thinks about children. See, we often think of our children as a burden. Let's see what the Most High thinks about our children. Psalms 127, verse 3. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord. Children are an heritage of the Lord. Go ahead. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. The fruit of the womb, meaning the child, what is produced from a man and a woman coming together... The man knowing the woman, her conceiving, that is what it means, that's what it means by the fruit of the womb, is a what? Excuse me? Is, is his reward. And the fruit of the womb, children, are the Most High's reward. So we may look at it as a burden, but to the Most High, it is a reward. It is a blessing. Okay? Which is why, again, we must make sure that we do as all that we can as parents... To ensure that we're bringing this reward from the Most High into the best environment possible. Okay? I'm not saying just go out there um, lackadaisical and just start having children and not bringing them into a good environment. And just setting the children up and yourselves up for failure. That's not what I'm saying. There, is some, there are some things that, some, plans, you know, some, some thought that goes into having children. Okay? Because they're so precious. Right? But the point we're making here is to say that don't look at these children as a burden. They are a blessing from on high. Okay, let's move on to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse number 5. Yep. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm going to read just verse 5 of 127. It says, Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. Mm. They shall not be ashamed but they shall speak with the enemies in the gates. Mm, mm, mm. So ha <laughs> exactly, happy is the man who who has an abundance of children. Why it says they shall speak to the enemy at the gate. Okay, when it's time to face the enemy, would the Jacob send out? Well, who did Jacob send out? He sent out his sons, his twelve sons. Okay, so that's another aspect. The scripture says. He who educates or he who teaches his son grieves the enemy. So it's a blessing to have these children because they mean so much, especially in these anxious societies. They meant so much for the family. 
And they still mean a lot to our families today. We just have to know their volume. Okay. Let's go on to the book. Before we get Jeremiah 1 and 5, let's go to another one. Let's go to the book of uh, 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 Psalms 139 and 15 through 16. Okay, because there's a lot of controversy and conversations taking place in the earth with these so-called philosophers called scientists. Okay, these so-called scientists, I should say, who are really philosophers trying to tell you or convince you that a child becomes a child at a certain stage. A fetus. Is, this, is it a child? Could it be considered a child as a fetus? Could it be considered a child as an embryo? We really don't know. Some say yes, some say no, but who knows? Okay, but let's see what the Bible says. Psalms 139 and 15. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lower parts of the earth. You see that? Read that again. See what David says? My substance was not hid from thee. My substance, what we call today maybe an embryo or a fetus, was not hid from the Most High. Okay, when we were in our mother's bellies, as fetuses or embryos, whatever you want to call it scientifically, the Most High saw us. The Most High was with us. Okay, read on. When I was made in secret. When I was made in secret, go ahead, meaning in the secret parts of our mother's belly, the Most High saw us. He had a hand on us. Read on. And curiously wrought in the lower parts of the earth. And curiously wrought in the lower parts of the earth. Read on. Thine eyes. And it says curiously mm -hmm. wrought. Mm. You understand, this is not by happenstance. This is not a process of evolution, as they try to tell you in science. The Most High says we were curiously wrought. Think about the process of a child, from the seed to now that child developing in the womb and to now it's starting to look like something that resembles what we call a human being. That is a, that is a hell of a process that does not happen by chance. That's a process that was created and is guided by the Most High himself. Okay? He says, curiously wrought, meaning a lot of thought went into this process of producing children. Okay? From the seed all the way to the time that the child comes forth. He said, curiously wrought. Read on. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. It says, you, my, read that again. Thine eyes did see my substance. Thine eyes did see my substance. When I was just a, whatever, a fetus or a, 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 an embryo in my mother's womb, you saw my substance. Even though I was not yet per perfect, I was not yet developed, but yet you still saw me. You still witnessed me. Your hand was still upon me. Okay, read on. And in thy book, all my members were written. In your book, all my members, my body parts, were written. Meaning the Most High, everything is accounted for from the Most High. From, even from the time you're, you're, you are unperfect in your mother's womb, you're not fully developed. Yet and still, every aspect of your body is accounted for from on high. So they can't convince us that a child is not a child until a certain month or to a, a certain stage of the, the fetus being developed. Okay? We're going to show you when the Most High considers that child a child. And as we can see here, from the time that you and your mother's womb and you are, you, you're starting to germinate and you're starting to come together, the Most High has already, has already considered you. Okay? Any more on that? Read on. Which in continuous, at uh, continuance, were fashioned when as yet there was none of them. Mm, it says, in continuance was fashioned, meaning it took a process of time, namely nine months, for my members to be fashioned. When it, from the beginning, there was nothing. You know, I, I was just, you know, I started off as a seed. I didn't have anything. And over time, I start to get arms. I start to get a head. Start to develop eyes, legs, feet, toes, hands, so on and so forth. A heart, a brain, veins, blood. All of that takes place over the process of time, and that process is guided from the Most High. Read on. Okay, that's it on that. Yeah. Let's go to the book of Job 10 and 9. 
Job 10 and 9, again, we're just showing you what the Mosai thinks about abortion, starting off showing you the process of life and how it is documented in Scripture. Okay? Now, keep in mind, all of this is documented and mentioned before any... Uh, what are those machines they, they use to... Uh, Sonogram. Sonograms. This is before sonograms. That David is able to give a, 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 a detailed... Uh, uh, detailed insight and description of how that child goes from seed all the way at the end of nine months. And now it's coming out a full body with all its members. Okay. Which means what David was, they didn't have anything to look beyond a woman's uh, stomach to see inside and, and to see this process, which means this had to come from on high. This had to be divinely inspired information to let them know and, and, and give them insight on this process. Okay, go ahead. Verse 9. Uh, Job 10, 10 and, and 9 through 13. Job 10 and 9. Remember, I beseech thee that thou hast made me as the clay, and wilt thou bring me into dust again? Hast thou not poured me out as milk and curdled me like cheese? Thou hast clothed me with skin and flesh. Let me, someone mentioned what happens if a child, what went wrong when a child is... Is uh, gay. Okay, well, we'll try to touch on that. But read that again, verse number nine. Thou hast clothed me with skin and flesh. So you said nine. Mm -hmm. Remember, I beseech thee that thou hast made me as the clay. You made me out of the clay. Go ahead. And wilt thou bring me into dust again? And will you bring me back to the clay again, or will you bring me back to the dust again? Okay, read on. Hast thou not poured me out as milk? Have you not poured me out as milk? What is that talking about? We started off as what? A seed. Okay? That's what it means when it... Excuse me. When it says, Have you not poured me out as milk? Read on. And curdled me like cheese. And curdled me like cheese. Again, speaking about the process from which we all start from. From what? From seed. Okay? Go ahead. Thou hast clothed me with skin and flesh. You have clothed me with skin and flesh. Now again, the scriptures, the prophets in the scriptures are documenting the process of birth going all the way back to the seed. And here it is, they're having arguments of when do you start being a child? Or when do you start becoming a life? When the Most High documents the process and considers you a life from the time you, you start from that seed all the way to the end of that nine months. The Most High is looking at you as a life. Okay, read on. And has fenced me with bones and sinews. You fenced me with bones and sinews. Okay, so Job is now going deeper into that process of us starting off as that seed and through that process, same way David said, now the flesh starts to come on. The bones start to develop and all those various things develop during the process in your mother's womb. When you think of that process of, of, of birth, it's a, it's, a, it's a miraculous process. Okay, read on. Thou hast granted me life and favor mm -hmm. and thy visitation have preserved my spirit. Mm-hmm. And these things hast thou hid in thine heart. I know that this is with thee. I know that this is with thee. This is hid in your heart. Meaning the Most High is looking at this process. He's guiding this process. And he's considering your life from the time you are that seed all the way to the time you develop. There is no stage where the Most High is looking and saying, well, this is not really a life. Which means if you kill it at this time, then it doesn't really, you don't really... It's not, you know, it's not considered anything because you're not really a life. Okay? The Most High is looking at you from that whole process. Okay? Let's take it even deeper. Let's go to Jeremiah 1 and 5. Okay? Jeremiah 1 and 5. Let's take this even deeper. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 5. Mm-hmm. Before I formed thee in the belly. Before I formed you in the belly. Before you were seed. Before you were a fetus or an embryo or in a development stages of your mother's womb. I knew thee. I knew thee. Read on. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. I already predestined you to be a prophet to the nations. This is the Most High speaking to Jeremiah. Before you were even in your mother's womb. Okay. So this is how deep this process goes. The Most High is dealing with us all the way from the beginning. Going back to the spirit world, the Most High is dealing with us and guiding the process of our birth. 
Okay? So this is not a frivolous thing. This is not just a nonchalantly, this is not something to be taken nonchalantly. This is very serious when we're talking about bringing forth children into the earth. And for someone to have a child go through that full process where their spirit is sent into that womb, and that child is developed over time, and for someone to selfishly say that I'm going to take away this child's life for my career's sake, for my education's sake, for my future's sake, is selfish. Okay? And there's a, there's a price to pay for it, but that's another thing for another day. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy 22 and 6. We're going to show you something about the society we live in, which is a hypocritical society. A society full of hypocrisy. Okay? Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 6. Deuteronomy 22 and 6. If a bird's nest chance to be before thee in the way in any tree, or on the ground, whether they be young ones or eggs, and the dam sitting upon the young or upon the eggs, thou shalt not take the dam with the young. Thou shalt not take the dam with the young. So in the law, we had laws protecting birds. Okay, so that's a good thing. Read on. But thou shalt in any wise let the dam go, and take the young to thee, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest prolong thy days. When thou buildest a new house, then thou shalt... Let's sit on that. Yep. Okay, so in the law, we had laws protecting birds. And believe it or not, this society has laws protecting birds. Okay. I want you all to see this. We're going to just read this real quick. This is uh, from Protect Bald Eagles, Eagle Nests, and Habitats. So the law. Bald eagles were removed from the federal list of threatened and endangered species in 2007 and are no longer protected under the Endangered Species Act. However, bald eagles remain protected under the Bald and Golden Eagle Protection Act and Migratory Bird Treaty Act. Originally passed in 1940, this law provides for the protection of the bald eagle and the golden eagle amended in 1962 by, prohib by, by prohibiting take, possession, sell, purchase, barter, offer to sell, purchase, or barter, transport, export, or import of any bald or golden eagle, alive or dead, including any part, nest, or egg, unless allowed by permit. Okay? So there's laws protecting birds in a society. In fact, I'm not sure if this is still in play, but there was a time in which if you damaged an eagle's egg, you were under, you, you could possibly be under a fine or even jailed for damaging an eagle's egg or any other creature, I believe, that's under the Endangered Species Act. So many people may look and say, well, that's just because it's similar to the Bible. The Bible has laws protecting birds. They have laws protecting birds. Here's the problem. Let's go to the book of St. Matthew chapter 10, verse number 29 through 31. Here's the issue. Because yes, they'll protect the birds. They'll protect the whales. They'll protect the seals. They'll protect the trees. Okay. They'll protect all of these creatures under the sun or proclaim to protect the cre all of the creatures under the sun. Okay. But let's see what Christ says. Let's go to the book of Matthew 10 and 29. Matthew 10 and 29. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father? Read that again. Are not two sparrows so sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father? So birds are sold or sparrows are sold for a farthing and one of them shall not fall to the ground without your father, meaning a bird without, will not die without the Most High commanding it. Meaning everything is accounted for in this earth. Okay, read on. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. The very hairs of your head are all numbered. They are accounted for. Read on. Fear ye not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. You are of more value than sparrows. You are of more value than birds. So, 
on the surface, it seems like it's a righteous thing that they are willing to protect the birds. Hey, the Most High protects the birds. But here's the question. Are you not worth more than birds? Are your children not worth more than birds? So the same way they protect the life of an eagle, that same exact effort should go into protecting the life of your newborn child. The same way they put laws on the books to protect the bald eagle, to protect the whales, to protect the trees, and to protect everything else in the society. Those same laws should be put on the books to protect your newborn child. But that's the hypocrisy of the society. Everything takes precedence over your so-called black and Latino life. Everything takes precedent over your life. Okay? Let's go on to the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 3. We only have a few more before we close out. Romans 10 and 3. Okay? Because now we're showing you what this society has done. They'll protect the birds. Don't let Peter see you with a mink coat. What's that other thing? A, a, a chinchilla. Don't let Peter see you with a chinchilla. Okay? You're the worst thing since Judas Iscariot. Okay? You're the worst thing since Cain himself. If they see you with a, a, a fur coat. Okay? But abortion? Ah, eh, who cares? Well, let's see what the Bible says about that. Romans 10 and 3. Romans 10 and 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So they have established their own righteousness where life that is of less value to human life. Remember, you are the center of God's creation. The Most High gave you the authority to rule over all creatures. The creatures are waiting for you to come back to your prominence according to the book of Romans 8 and 38. The creature waited for the earnest uh, the earnest expectation of the manifestation of the sons of God, just loosely quoting that scripture. Or the earnest expectation for the creature or of the creature is for the manifestation of the sons of God. In other words, the creatures are waiting for you to come back into power and authority to rule this earth correctly because they're suffering as well. And there should be laws on the books to pr protect the creatures. Even the scripture says that a righteous man cared for the life of his beast. But you can't in one breath claim that you care about the creatures. You, clear, you care about the trees. You care about the whales. You care about the seagulls. You care about the seals. You care about the polar bears. Okay? You care about everything else. But when it comes to the life of a black child, it's like dirt. Okay? It has no value. They've been putting laws in the books that uh, at a certain term where the child is ready to come out the womb, you can still decide to kill that child. That's how small of a life or how much small of a value they consider the, ch the life of a black child. Okay? But here it is. The creatures, the eagles, are looking for the uprising and the, the, the manifestation of that black child that you're willing to take down to the clinic and kill. They're waiting for that child to rise up and become uh, a, a, a man or a woman of the Most High. That will one day rule the earth in righteousness. Okay? That's satanic to try to take, take up the cause of saving creatures before saving the image of the creator. That's foolishness. Okay? We're reading on. Let's go on. Uh, Exodus chapter 21, chapter 22, verse 25. What does the Most High think about abortion? Okay? We got this. We'll take one more scripture after this and then we'll close out. Okay, one more scripture, then we'll close out. Yep. If men strive, by uh, Exodus 21 and 22, if men strive and hurt a woman with child, so did her fruit depart from her. So this is, read that again. If men strive and hurt a woman with child, so did her fruit depart from her. So if men are fighting, they're striving, and they make a mistake and hit a woman and that woman's fruit depart from her accidentally, not purposefully. This was an accident. Read on. And yet no mischief follow. No mischief follow. Go ahead. He shall be surely punished. 
He uh, shall be punished. Go ahead. According as the woman's husband will lay upon him. Mm -hmm. And he shall pay as the judges determine. Mm -hmm. And if any mischief follow, then shall thou then sh then thou shalt give life for life. So if mischief follow, meaning that this child dies through accident. Okay? Not intentionally through accident. This child dies. Read on. It says it shall be what? And if any mischief follow, then thou, uh, then thou shalt give life for life. Then you shall give life for life. Read on. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth, mm -hmm. hand for hand, foot for foot. So, in other words, if the life of that child departs accidentally, then the, the life of the person who caused that child to die accidentally shall be put to death. Meaning what? That an accidental abortion in the Most High's commandments is punishable by death. That's how serious it is. So imagine what the punishment is for an intentional abortion. Okay. One more scripture. Let's go to the book of Exodus chapter 30 or uh, Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. So what should be the choice? In fact, before we do that, let's go to the book of Acts 3.19. Let's go to Acts 3.19 very quickly because I know when we bring out stuff like this, we know that brothers and sisters have done things in the past which they have ought not, which were against the will of the Most High. We understand that. And when we bring information like this out, people feel convicted and they feel like there is no hope. What we're here to tell you is that there is hope. Okay? Here's the hope. Uh, Acts 3 and 19. Hmm. Acts 3 and 19. Repent ye, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So if you have committed abortion in the past, if you have killed or murdered your children in the past, according to what the Bible says, not according to what the society says, I know they told you that it wasn't a life yet. I know they told you that you must consider your future. You must consider your body. It's your body. It's your choice. Many of you were on hard times and uh, didn't know how you would take care of the child and didn't want to bring the child into a bad situation. We understand all of the things that go through the minds of our people when they make these decisions. Okay. If you have made these decisions in the past, the Bible says what? Read that again. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. So it says repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse number 30, and then we'll end it with Deuteronomy 30 and 19. Acts, chapter 17 and 30. And the times of this, uh, in, 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 excuse me, in the times of this ignorance, God winked at. In the time of our ignorance, God winked at. We did a lot of things in the past in ignorance, made a lot of decisions in ignorance. Based on our miseducation, based on the propaganda like we saw uh, on the, the website of Planned Parenthood. OK, uh, back in the day, you, you remember I remember back in the day uh, uh, growing up in Philadelphia and certain literature that we, we passed on to older siblings in school and the conversations that would be had. And uh, I'm talking about uh, 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 women that were and I'm talking about elementary school. Already conversations about some of these girls were pregnant and having children and uh, different options being put to them and different conversations amongst them about uh, abortions and things of that nature and killing their children. OK, middle school, high school, already these conversations were being introduced. OK, so a lot of this is miseducation. OK, uh, lack lack of uh, proper upbringing and things of that nature. And some of it, we got to just take the accountability for. A lot of us just made just bad, horrible decisions. Okay, read on. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. The Bible says that the Most High call of all men and women everywhere to repent. We must repent. Okay? Irregardless of what you've done in the past, now it's time to repent. Last scripture, Deuteronomy 30, verse number 19. Deuteronomy chapter 
chapter 30. Verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death. I have set before you life and death. So understand that the decision of life and death is before us. But this is what God counsels us to do. This is what God commands us to do. Go in. Blessing and cursing. Blessing and cursing is before us. Go in. Therefore choose life. Therefore do what? Therefore choose life. Therefore choose life. The Most High commands us to choose life. When you're sitting there, you're considering what to do with that child. You don't know how you're going to make a way out of no way. It looks like a, a dark shadow is around you. You go to the scripture. You pray to the Most High. And you ask them to give you the strength to choose life. Okay. And with that, I want to say blessings and shalom. That'll be the end of our lesson. And again, I want to make this announcement before we close out. That we are accepting enrollments for the upcoming Hebrew and Bible Academy. If you're interested in the upcoming Academy, please send an email to, or better yet, go to historytimes.org. And uh, you can enroll in the upcoming Academy. We have brand new lessons as well as other lessons who have uh, been updated or which have been updated from the past. So even if you've been in past academies, the information is constantly being updated to make sure that your experience is new every time. OK, so with that, thank you all for your participation in, in today's lesson. The most uh, uh, Elder Rikash Yar will be back if it be the Lord's will this coming Wednesday and next Saturday. Uh, he will also be teaching for those who are in the academy. Uh, present for tomorrow's academy. But until then, blessings and shalom. You just try.